The Comanche is a Native American tribe from the southern plains of the present-day United States. Comanche people today belong to the federally recognized Comanche Nation, headquartered in Lawton, Oklahoma. The Comanche language is a Numic language of the Uto Aztecan family. Originally, it was a Shoshone dialect, but diverged and became a separate language. The Comanche were once part of the Shoshone people of the Great Basin. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Comanche lived in most of present-day northwestern Texas and adjacent areas in eastern New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, southwestern Kansas, and western Oklahoma. Spanish colonists and later Mexicans called their historical territory Comancheria. During the 18th and 19th centuries, Comanche practiced a nomadic horse culture and hunted, particularly bison. They traded with neighboring Native American peoples, and Spanish, French, and American colonists and settlers. As European Americans encroached on their territory, the Comanche waged war on the settlers and raided their settlements, as well as those of neighboring Native American tribes. They took with them captives from other tribes during warfare, using them as slaves, selling them to the Spanish and, later, to Mexican settlers, or adopting them into their tribe. Thousands of captives from raids on Spanish, Mexican, and American settlers were assimilated into Comanche society. At their peak, the Comanche language was the lingua franca of the Great Plains region. Diseases, destruction of the buffalo herds, and territory loss forced most Comanches on reservations in Indian territory by the late 1870s. In the 21st century, the Comanche Nation has 17,000 members, around 7,000 of whom reside in tribal jurisdictional areas around Lawton, Fort Sill, and the surrounding areas of southwestern Oklahoma. The Comanche Homecoming Annual Dance takes place in mid-July in Walters, Oklahoma. The Comanche's autonym is NMN, meaning, the human beings, or, the people. The earliest known use of the term, Comanche, dates to 1706, when the Comanche were reported by Spanish officials to be preparing to attack far outlying Pueblo settlements in southern Colorado. The Spanish adopted the Ute name for the people, Comanche enemy, and spelled it the way they pronounced it in Spanish. Before 1740, French explorers from the east sometimes used the name Paducah for the Comanche since it was already used for the Plains Apache and the French were not aware of the change of tribe in the region in the early 18th century. In the 18th and 19th centuries the Comanche became the dominant tribe on the southern Great Plains. The Comanche are often characterized as, Lords of the Plains. They presided over a large area called Comancheria which they shared with allied tribes, the Kiowa, Kiowa Apache, Plains Apache, Wichita, and after 1840 the southern Cheyenne and Arapaho. Comanche power and their substantial wealth depended on horses, trading, and raiding. Adroit diplomacy was also a factor in maintaining their dominance and fending off enemies for more than a century. They subsisted on the bison herds of the plains which they hunted for food and skins. Their extensive area of suzerainty has been called an empire, but the Comanche were never united under a single government or leader. They consisted of several bands with a common language which operated independently of each other. Estimates of the Comanche's total population in 1780, when they were most numerous, were usually around 20,000, although one estimate numbers them at 40,000. The Comanche bands regularly waged war on neighboring tribes and European settlers encroaching on Comancheria. Although infamous for their unrelenting warfare and raiding into Mexico, they also took thousands of captives from raids on other native tribes as well as Anglo settlers on the American frontier. Many of these captives were kept as slaves or traded to the Spanish in New Mexico. But captives taken by the Comanche at a young age were usually assimilated into Comanche society as members of the tribe. By 1875, decimated by European diseases, warfare, a tide of Anglo settlement, and the near extinction of the bison. The Comanche had been defeated by the U.S. Army and were forced to live on an Indian reservation in Oklahoma. In 1920 the United States Census listed fewer than 1,500 Comanche. Tribal enrollment in the 21st century numbered 15,191, 
With 7,763 members residing in the Lawton Fort Sill and surrounding areas of southwest Oklahoma. Of the 3 million acres 12,000 square kilometers promised the Comanche, Kiowa and Kiowa Apache by treaty in 1867, only 235,000 acres 951 square kilometers have remained in native hands. Of this, 4,400 acres 18 square kilometers are owned by the tribe itself. The Comanche were closely related in language and tradition to the Eastern Shoshone of Wyoming. The Comanche probably split from the Shoshone in the 16th century with the Comanche moving south to Colorado and becoming, as did the Eastern Shoshone, bison hunting Great Plains nomads. The movement onto the Great Plains may have been stimulated by wetter climatic conditions which permitted an increase in the bison population on the Great Plains. In southern Colorado, the Comanche formed an alliance with the Uden in the late 17th century, it appears the subsistence pattern of the two tribes were similar. From fall to early spring, the Comanche separated into small groups and were hunter-gatherers in western Colorado, especially the San Luis Valley. In late spring the Comanche and Ute crossed the Sangre de Cristo Mountains and moved eastward onto the Great Plains where they hunted bison during the summer months. They probably first acquired horses during the 1680s after the Pueblo peoples expelled the Spanish for 12 years from New Mexico and Spanish horses became available to the native peoples. The acquisition of horses enabled the Comanche to have the mobility to become wide-ranging nomads. In 1706, Spanish soldier Juan de Ulibarri in the Pueblo settlement of Taos made the first European mention of the Comanche. He was told by the leaders of the settlement that, the infidel enemies of the Uden Comanche tribe were about to make an attack upon this Pueblo. The attack did not occur but the reputation of the Comanche as an aggressive tribe which raided sedentary peoples was established. The Ute word Caymanci, probably meaning, enemy, was the name by which the Comanche became known. Their name for themselves was NMN, meaning, people. The French, encountering the Comanche before 1740 called the Comanche Paducah, a name they also gave to the Apache, thus causing confusion in the early history of French contact with the two peoples. Comanche history for the 18th century falls into three broad and distinct categories. 1. The Comanche and their relationship with the Spanish, Puebloans, Ute, and Apache peoples of New Mexico. 2. The Comanche and their relationship with the Spanish, Apache, Wichita, and other peoples of Texas. And 3. The Comanche and their relationship with the French and the Indian tribes of Oklahoma and Kansas. By the late 18th century, there were two distinct groups of Comanche. The Western Bands, resident in New Mexico, Colorado, Kansas, and the Texas Panhandle were oriented toward the Spanish settlements of New Mexico. The Eastern Bands in southwestern Oklahoma and central Texas were oriented toward the Spanish settlements of Texas. A third challenge to the Comanche were the French and their Indian allies on the eastern border of the Great Plains. In the 19th century the emigrant five civilized tribes of Oklahoma and the Anglo residents of Texas presented new challenges to the Comanche. In the early 18th century the Ute and Comanche who were probably the junior partners of the alliance at this time established their primacy on the northern frontier of Spanish New Mexico. Although their depredations consisted mostly of stealing livestock. In 1716, the governor of New Mexico launched an attack against a peaceful Ute Comanche camp near San Antonio Mountain. 140 kilometers 87 miles north of the capital of Santa Fe, killing and capturing many and enslaving the captives. After that incident the conflict between the Spanish and Ute Comanche became more violent. In 1719, the Ute and Comanche carried out a large raid in the Taos area and killed several people. The Spanish governor organized an expedition to punish the Indians and an army of more than 700. Mostly Pueblos and Apache, marched north to the Arkansas River Valley and searched for two months without finding a single Ute or Comanche. However, the expedition learned that the Apache peoples in southern Colorado were suffering heavy attacks from the Ute and Comanche. Several of the Apache bands would shortly seek safety nearer to the Spanish settlements in New Mexico, other bands would remain hostile to both the Spanish and the Comanche. 
In the 1720s, the Comanche completed the conquest of the Arkansas River Valley of Colorado. And in the 1730s they became the first fully mounted, bison hunting nomads of the Great Plains, the first American Indians to make the cultural shift to an equestrian economy. The Comanche pushed the Apache south and west off the Great Plains and continued to expand southward. The Comanche grew apart from their Ute allies, both culturally and politically in the 1730s, and in 1749, the Ute asked the Spanish in New Mexico for military assistance against the Comanche. The war between the Ute and Comanche would continue for the remainder of the 18th century, although the Comanche had greater priorities than the Ute. The Puebloan and Spanish population in New Mexico in 1749 was only 15,000 and the Comanche, despite several military reverses, began to dominate the colony, alternately trading and raiding. In 1747, a Spanish and Puebloan force of more than 500 men attacked a Comanche and Ute camp near the Chama River, killing 107 of the Indians and capturing 206. In 1751, Spanish and Puebloan troops trapped 300 Comanche in a box canyon and killed 112 and captured 33. These defeats caused the Comanche to sue for peace. The peace agreement of 1752 was favorable to the Comanche, granting them trade privileges and treatment as a sovereign nation, and freeing them to make war on the Ute. In 1761, after a minor dispute, the Spanish joined the Ute, attacked a Comanche encampment and killed more than 400 and captured 300 people. The resultant peace agreement in 1762 was again mostly favorable to the Comanche granting them status as allies rather than enemies of the Spanish in New Mexico. The 1762 peace agreement broke down after 1767. And the Comanche embarked on an intense campaign which over several years killed hundreds of Spanish and Puebloans and left the Rio Grande Valley of New Mexico in ruins. In 1774, the Spanish responded. 600 soldiers surrounded a band of Comanches and killed 300 men, women, and children and took more than 100 prisoners. Being taken prisoner by the Spanish usually meant transport to the mines of Mexico or the sugar plantations of the Caribbean for men in slavery in Spanish households for women and children. Undeterred by their occasional defeats, the Comanche continued to strengthen their economic and political hold on New Mexico. The last major battle between the New Mexican settlers and the Comanche took place in 1779. The governor of New Mexico, Juan Bautista de Anza, an experienced Indian fighter, took the war to the Comanche in their own country. With 800 men, including 200 Ute and Apache auxiliaries. He marched north and killed Cuerno Verde, Greenhorn, the most important Comanche war leader and many of his followers in the Greenhorn Valley south of Pueblo, Colorado. Raids dropped off noticeably but did not halt entirely. In the summer of 1785, De Anza let it be known that he was interested in making peace with the Comanches if they could agree on a single leader to represent them. The idea took root and received a major push when the Eastern Comanche in Texas signed a peace treaty. Negotiated by Pedro Vial and Francisco Xavier Chaves, that autumn with Texas Governor Domingo Cabello y Robles. Among the Western Comanche, the main opposition to peace was a leader named White Bull Toro Blanco. The peace faction of the Comanche assassinated him and the Kotsoteca, Jupe, and Yamperica sub-tribes gave the power to make peace to a leader named Aquaricapa. After two meetings at Pecos and another in a Comanche camp early in 1786, De Anza sent a signed treaty to Mexico City in July. De Anza also arranged a truce between the Ute and Comanche, while gaining a Comanche alliance with the Spanish against the Apache, many groups of which were hostile to the Spanish. The 1786 agreement ended major hostilities between the Comanche and the Spanish and Puebloans of New Mexico. The peace of 1786 endured. The Comanche and Spanish undertook joint operations against their common Apache enemy. The Spanish extended their settlements eastward onto the Great Plains and the population of New Mexico increased. The Spanish showered the Comanche with gifts and removed trade restrictions on guns and ammunition. A few Comanche sent their children to Spanish schools. Travelers crossed the plains from east to west without danger. 
A class of traders, called Comancheros, transported Spanish goods into the Comanche heartland in the Texas Panhandle and traded for buffalo robes, meat, and horses. With a safe haven in New Mexico, the Comanche began to raid deep into Mexico. In 1841 New Mexico Governor Manuel Armillo was ordered by the Mexican central government to join a military campaign against the Comanche, but Armillo declined. To declare war on the Comanches would bring complete ruin to the Department of New Mexico. Similar to the Spanish colonies in New Mexico, the struggling Spanish colonies in Texas barely survived Apache and Comanche hostility during the 18th century. In the 1770s the Spanish population of Texas was only about 3,000 although the Spanish were reinforced by being allied at one time or another with many of the Indian tribes of the colony. The first record of the Comanche in Spanish Texas is 1743 when a scouting party visited San Antonio. By that time, the Comanche had already pushed the Apache off the Great Plains into southern Texas where they became the Lipan Apache. To the deserts of the southwest, or into close proximity and alliance with the Spanish in New Mexico. The Spanish and Lipan had initially been at war with each other but in 1749 they made peace in common accord to resist the Comanche threat. The peace endured only a few years. In Texas in the 1750s, the Comanche allied themselves with the group of tribes the Spanish called Norteños or Northerners as they resided north of the Spanish settlements. The Norteños consisted of the Wichita. Especially their sub-tribe of the Tauvias who had moved southward to the Red River Valley of Oklahoma and Texas about 1750. The Tonkawa of the Texas Plains and the Hasene, the westernmost of the Caddo people. In 1758 a large band of Norteños, including Comanches, sacked the San Saba mission, established by the Spanish to advance northward from San Antonio and to make Christians of the Lipan. In 1759, a Spanish and Indian army of more than 500 men attempted revenge for San Saba by attacking two large fortified Tauvaya villages in the Red River Valley near Spanish Fort, Texas. They were defeated in the Battle of the Twin Villages by the Tauvaya and the Comanche. Initially, the Comanche in Texas traded meat and buffalo pelts to the Tauvayas and other Wichita sub-tribes, who were farmers, for agricultural products, especially maize. The Wichita also served as middlemen for the trade of Comanche horses to Spanish colonies in Louisiana. In the 1770s that alliance broke down. The Wichitas were severely weakened by outbreaks of European diseases. The Comanche moved eastward to the Brazos River and began to trade directly with the Spanish and French population of Louisiana. Meanwhile, the Spanish in Texas were also menaced by the powerful Osage tribe on its northeastern frontier and Apache raids south of the Rio Grande River in Mexico and began seeking peace with the Comanche. However, in 1778 the massacre of a Comanche peace delegation in eastern Texas ignited the most serious Comanche attacks on Spanish settlements and other Indian tribes yet seen in Texas. The Spanish dream of a powerful colony in Texas to counter the advance of British and French colonists was dashed as Spanish Texas came under heavy assault by the Comanche. In 1780-1781, a smallpox epidemic reduced the Indian population, including the Comanche. The epidemic, plus a realization by both Spanish and Comanche that they had other interests and enemies, led to moves toward peace by both parties. In 1785, brokered by the Wichita, Pedro Vial and Comanche-speaking Francisco Xavier Chaves negotiated an agreement with the Eastern Comanche which included large gifts to the Comanche and the return by the Comanche of all Spanish prisoners they held captive. As mentioned above that agreement led to a similar agreement between the Spanish of New Mexico and the Western Comanche in 1786. The French had few face-to-face -face contacts with the Comanche. Their contacts were indirect through the Indian tribes that they traded with on the eastern border of the Great Plains. French traders were living along the lower Missouri River and in Louisiana early in the 18th century. The French interest was economic as opposed to the Spanish interests in colonizing, exploiting mineral wealth, and spreading Christianity among the Native American peoples. 
In 1720, the Spanish sent out a military expedition to expel French traders from the plains, but most of the members of the Villiser expedition were killed by the Pawnee in Nebraska. The first Frenchmen known to have met the Comanche were the brothers Pierre Antoine and Paul Mallet in 1739. The Mallets met the Laytane Comanche along the Arkansas River in Colorado. The French brokered a peace agreement between the Wichita and the Comanche in 1746. The most powerful tribe the Comanche faced in the eastern Great Plains were the Osage who prevented the Comanche from advancing eastwards beyond approximately the middle portion of both Kansas and Oklahoma. In the 18th century the Osage expanded from their Missouri home onto the Great Plains to hunt bison and satisfy the French demand for bison robes and slaves. The Osage had ready access to French products, including guns. The hostility of the Osage forced the Wichita trading partners and allies of the Comanche, to move southward from northern Oklahoma and southern Kansas to the Red River Valley of Oklahoma and Texas about 1750. In northern Kansas and Nebraska, the Comanche were sporadically at war with the Pawnee, another powerful tribe allied with the French. From the 1740s onward the Comanche raided the Pawnee for slaves and the Pawnee raided the Comanche for horses. In 1805, the governor of Louisiana James Wilkinson said the Comanche were the most powerful nation of savages on this continent. The Comanche controlled 200,000 square miles 520,000 square kilometers of the Great Plains. Possessed a marketable commodity with their large herds of horses, and relied on the seemingly inexhaustible herds of bison for subsistence. A smallpox epidemic had thinned their numbers in 1780-1781. Reoccurrences of smallpox and other European diseases would continue to cause a decline in their numbers. But they still numbered about 20,000 as their population was bolstered by captives adopted into the tribe. In 1823, the Mexican government estimated that the Eastern Comanche had 2,500 captives among their numbers, and that was not counting a sizable number of persons who had voluntarily joined the tribe. An estimate from the early 1830s claimed 500 to 600 not counting Native Americans in slavery. In 1790 the Comanche added new Native American partners. 2,000 Kiowa and Kiowa Apache joined them as allies in Comancheria. The peace agreements with the Spanish remained mostly effective, keeping a delicate balance between accommodation and antagonism. The Spanish continued to give gifts and hospitality to the Comanche. The French were gone after 1803 when they sold Louisiana to the United States. Anglo-Americans on the borders of Comancheria provided a new market and new dangers for the Comanche. The Spanish were few in numbers, the Americans were numerous. The Spanish and Cublone population of New Mexico was 25,000 in 1800 and was increasing after decades of war with the Comanche. Texas had a Spanish population of perhaps 5,000. In contrast, the United States had a population of 10 million in 1820 and Anglo-Americans were beginning to settle in Texas. The Anglo market for Comanche horses and mules was large. Irish-born Philip Nolan was one of the first American traders with the Comanche in the 1790s. The peace with the Spanish in Texas suffered stains after 1795 and in New Mexico when the Mexican War of Independence began in 1810, although the Comanche continued to trade with the Spanish. The tribute extended to the Comanche dried up as the new country of Mexico had few resources to devote to its remote provinces. In 1822, the Mexicans made a grand effort to reduce the Comanche threat by inviting a delegation of Comanche leaders to Mexico City and signing a treaty between the Mexican Empire and the Comanche Nation. That granted many trading privileges to the Comanche. In 1824, attempting to secure the survival of the settlements in Texas, the Mexican government opened Texas to foreign settlers and the Anglo-Americans, who were already trading extensively with the Comanche, swarmed in. The concern of the Mexicans was real. In 1825, 330 Comanche rode into San Antonio, the capital and largest city of Texas, and remained there for six days, looting and enjoying themselves. In 1832, 500 Comanche occupied San Antonio for several days without any resistance from Mexican soldiers. 
The weakness of Mexican Texas enabled the Anglos to win the independence of Texas from Mexico in 1836.